Okay, no problem. Okay, I'm just waiting. There is still a few of the students that's WhatsApping me and saying that they want to join the meeting. They're just quickly waking up. <laughs> so we'll just give them five minutes. Um, quickly tell me, are you in five or in <laughs> four students? Okay. I'm in five. Okay, so basically, I'm just going to speak you through it while we are waiting for the others. Um, I've sent the PDF. I don't know if you could uh, open it up. Did you did you have trouble opening that up to see that um, what am I going to do today? It was about question C, uh, question six and seven. Could you open it up yesterday on the WhatsApp? Yes, yes, I've opened it up. I've opened it up this morning. Okay, perfect. Okay, so basically the reason why I am doing in four and in five together is your curriculum is 98% overlapping, which means the only part that you don't do in in four, but you will do then in in five is the charts or the graphs. So I will excuse the the enforce about 10, 15 minutes, um, you know, at the end. Yes. But, um, so that's why I don't don't feel funny now that I'm doing both classes in one. I've also done a word yesterday, a word session with my enforce. Okay. I am going to share it because sometimes the the um, I know your word is a bit more um, advanced, but there is still things they want you to know. Um, that you maybe did in in four. So I'm gonna yes. say, I'm gonna share that, you know, use it, don't use it. Okay. Oh, okay. It's like somebody else has joined us now. Hello. All right then. I can't see your Alexandra is joining us now. Let's just see. She's still connecting. It is a bit um, slow, and I, I seen that the. Do you also have trouble with the student app? Um, I know some of the students told me yesterday it's very slow for them. Do you have the same problem? Do you? Yes, yes, I'm having the same problem, and I resorted using my own uh, data because mm. it is very slow. Sometimes you don't even connect at all. Mm, yeah, you see, that's something we have to go and look into because um, it's a good platform, but it needs to work. So, and especially for computer practice, I think maybe when it's theoretical, you know, the theory part, yes. that's something different because I see that students don't have any trouble um, when they do the, yes. the theory, but because they, they just download the, you know, the, the, um, the documents mm. they need and they read. Good morning, Sandra. I see you've joined us as well now. Okay, then maybe Sandra, maybe because Sandra can just give us indication that she can hear us by raising her hand in the emoji or she can just say yes. You don't have to put on your audio for the whole time. If you want to ask me a question, you will see there's a reaction at the bottom of your screen. I don't know if you, all of you can see that, um, but then there's an option to raise your hand. Then maybe if I don't hear you while I'm speaking, then you can yes, do that. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna give one more minute and then I'm gonna start the class because they are they can okay. join whenever. So I'm just gonna quickly, there's two students that, that says they are joining us now. So I'm just gonna quickly wait for them. Um, I just want to have an indication while I'm speaking with you. I am thinking of organizing. I know you've got a, a practical, um, no, well, not a practical, but a practical class with Mrs. Weber on Saturday. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I was thinking, I don't know how much theory she has done or if she has done any. I know some of the lecturers are a bit scared of the theory. However, it is it is a very big part of your marks. So um, I am going to give you the opportunity to, I will also be there. 
but then I will um, help her with, with the classes so that there's enough people to answer your questions. But I'll have a separate lecture room where I will only do theory. It will obviously not be at the same time you have your practical class, but um, yes, I would advise you if you can maybe come, I won't make it too long, maybe an hour, hour and a half maximum. I know you will be doing the practical, but even if you just come and get some notes from me, um, to prepare you for the internal that you are writing that following week. Oh, okay, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Okay, so I will communicate that. Okay, well, I'm going to start now because they have to now, they can either then just log in and, um, you know, watch the recording. I will send the recording. Uh, the recording is, is very big because it's a two hour class normally. So I will advise you, if you can, create for yourself a Gmail account if you don't have one already. Then I am going to share the recording with you on the Google Drive. I will upload it on the student app as well because that is our platform that we, are, um, that we should use. But at the end of the day, when you are struggling to access something that's on a platform, then you know, then you have to revise your platform. So I will share the Google Drive then with you or my Google Drive. So it's um, those these days, most people have a Gmail account. I don't know if, if you do have one, but for the students that's listening in later on the recording as well, please create a Gmail. It's not difficult. Um, that's really the way to go because it's an online storage. You can access your stuff anywhere. Um, so I will send the MP3 through to that because it's too big to share on WhatsApp and it's too big to email. So um, it's basically, if you're, if you're un or uncertain of how Google Drive works, it's just like a, a cloud almost. It's a similar concept. Okay, so before I start the class, I want you to have the question 6A open in front of you, either on a digital advi uh, device, or maybe if you pr if you could print it out. I did send it as a PDF. If you have trouble opening that up, just let me know, then I can screenshot for you. Okay, so let's start off um, by just looking. I'm just quickly going to open up the question paper. So um, I know you, you should have that, obviously, in front of you now. Um, but I'm just going to quickly uh, show you what I am talking about. But I obviously have to share my screen. Otherwise, you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, OK, let me just quickly see. I want to share this with you. OK. OK, quickly, just give me an indication. Um, can you see my screen? Can you see the word that I am that I'm sharing now with you? Can you just give me an indication? Yes. Okay. Yes, Let's, I can see. Okay. So, uh, will you? I'm just gonna I'm gonna get, uh, make you my voice if that's okay. So, if there's any trouble, if my line maybe drops or something, you must just indicate for me. Is that fine? You don't have to keep on your audio, but if anything is uh, delaying, then please just just be my voice. Is that fine with you? It's okay, I'm fine. It's okay. Fine. Okay. So I think Cindy's has also joined us. You can just give an indication that you can hear me and see your screen. I'm just going to carry on and admit as we go on. Okay. So basically, I have given you this question paper. I hope most of you can see it. I'm quickly going to read through it so that you can have an understanding of what's expected of you once you get to Excel. I told Vu you now when the meeting has started, I did do an image word with my enforce. If there's a need you have for your word or access or um, whatever you feel like there's struggling points, please let me know via the student app either or WhatsApp me so that we can schedule a meeting or I can send. I've got lots of videos that's already prepared for you that I can send. So please ask. Um, I am, I'm really, I love what I'm doing. I'm, I'm also a teacher during the day at a high school. I teach cat. So my passion is really to help children. And I, well, children, you've, uh, I feel like all of you are my children. So I, I really enjoy what I'm doing. So please don't hesitate to ask me. I, I want to help you. I find a lot of satisfaction in knowing that I can help people, even if it's only one little light bulb that goes on. Okay, so that's it. Let's start. Okay, so 
you will see that the question papers of well any educational institution stays the same that's why it's so important um, for you as a lecturer to make sure that you almost prepare your students for for the end year exam okay that goes for high school so you must basically take in your grade tens or your students the first year and you must teach them how to read the question papers okay so that's part of what i'm trying to do here because if you catch that if you if you feel comfortable of how the question paper is asked then it's going to be easy for you to understand the content because the content really does stay the same it's just the the theory or the or rather let me say the text that's changed so for this one they will use smartphones tomorrow they will use coffee the next time they will use uh, cars okay i hope you catch mandra okay so let's quickly look at the um at what i'm doing here in question 6i there's lots of people admitting you can switch off your camera um if it's on you don't have to waste that um that uh, the your, your daughter for that okay so the first question says you need to create the spreadsheet on the next page okay so this is on your question paper now some students put up their hands and they're like ma'am where what i don't have this on my drive yes you will not have it because you have to create it. If it says retrieve, then it's already made up for you. That depends on the examiner, okay? If you need to create or either then retrieve that. Okay, so with that set is, make sure you don't make spelling mistakes on your first question or any mistake because that is your Lego block. I always say it's like you're building a little Lego, you know, you are you are busy building something up for you. Question 6A will then obviously 6B will follow up on that. Okay. Hello, sir. I don't know if you can hear me, but I can see you. Um, yeah, you can just join us. Can you see us, sir? Nigel, can you hear me? Nigel? Yes. Okay. Good morning. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Okay, wonderful. You can switch off your video if you feel like you want to. Otherwise, it doesn't bother me. You won't see me, but you will hear me and you will see the question paper. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Where is the switch off? Um, there should be a but. Ah, uh, I think you found it. Because I can't see you anymore. Okay. Sorry, darlings. I'm just admitting more students. Okay, let's carry on. So it says there you must create this. Okay, the first thing I want you to know, now some of you will be bored with what I'm saying, some of you, you've never heard this before. In an Excel document, there is not something like in Word. You know, in Word, you have an uppercase and lowercase. So when you have by mistake, put something in an uppercase that needs to go into a lowercase, you can do that. However, in Excel, you do not have that ability. So if they ask you to type this in and you see smartphones are in capital letters, you have to put on your caps lock. Okay, I assume you all know caps lock is found on your keyboard. You must you must make sure that the light goes on when you put caps lock and then take it off again. So you will see the smartphone connection income expenditure, all of those that you see the VAT, all of those that are um, capital letters should be typed in. Now, I'm just quickly, I've already done this for you, obviously. I've typed in the question for you last night so that it's easier. You should have done this or you should, after the video, try to do this on your own. So all of those that you see as capital letters must be switched on as a as a caps lock, okay? There's no other way. If you started off by a, by a, um, a small caps in or a lowercase, which is a synonym for for um for low case, then you you have to retype that. There is no other way, unfortunately. Okay, with that said, so I'm gonna go um switch via the word which I have the question paper and then go back. So I want you to understand how to read the question paper. They give you a screenshot of Excel. You will see there it says open row. Please don't type in open row. You must leave open a row. Now, um, 
maybe some of you are rolling your eyes for me now, but the e-students, nobody tells them this. So it's not a stupid question, okay? So can you see if I now compare this screenshot with my Excel document? You will see that wherever they said open row, I left up an open row. Okay, now let's say, um, are you all comfortable? Obviously, most of the N5 students have joined. I'm assuming that you're all comfortable with typing in, um, in into an Excel document. For the N4, I'm going to give this class. If there's anything afterwards, please make notes as I speak. If there's anything like you maybe don't understand how I got in inserting a row, please make a note as we speak and ask me a private question either on the hub or my WhatsApp. Okay. So let's carry on. So let's, I'm just quickly going to, those of you who forgot to input, let's say they've put this whole thing for you in already. Okay. And you need to put in those rows. So let's say there was no row there. And you have to put in the row. They <laughs> struggle sometimes to understand that your cursor, in other words, the marker of your column, your row, not your column, that's a column, that's a row. Let's say I have to put in, this is how I get it. You know, there's no space. And they are asking me on the question paper, they want a row. Okay, let me just show you. They want the open row between that. Then Please note, I'm putting it on that one and I say insert. So wherever you put in your highlighted, so if you highlight the row there, it will put in a row on top. Because if I if I was busy there, it and I want, let's say I want between six and seven. Can you see if I press insert now? It's not going to give me one between six and seven. It's going to put it above. Okay, you need to understand that when you need to put a row in between those two rows, you need to put the cursor wherever the row must fit in above. Okay, I hope I make sense. So if this row must go above the Samsung Galaxy, you must make sure that wherever it needs to go above, your highlighted row must be the one below. So you're going to say insert, and can you see it pops up there? Okay, control Z is my favorite, favorite shortcut. I know um, one of the lecturers said, oh, the students don't know shortcuts. Then I will send you a Google Chrome keyboard, okay, with all the shortcuts. Please, when you're in an office at home, print that thing out for you. I bought it on the Etsy shop, so I will with love share that with you. It's a very nice one. Or just keep it as a digital file with you, okay, because it just makes your life easier. Now, I'm interrupting myself, but I just want to know, let you know that for me, teaching you computer practice is not about passing your exams. I want to give you more than what you pay for. In other words, if you come into play with the office and you need to create something, I don't want you to pass your exam. I want you to pass your exam, but I also want you to go out there in your every day and feel like this is a subject that really, really helps you because it is a very nice subject to take. Okay, with that said, that's why I'm telling you the shortcuts. Control Z is the undo. Okay, it just makes your life easier because sometimes you make a mess in your exam. Okay, I'm just going to ask if your audio is on. Can you please just switch that off for us kindly? Thank you. It's just making funny noises on my side. And I'm just scared for the recording. Okay, so control Z is the undo button. So whatever you have done and you want to go back to your previous step, you can do control Z. Okay, I'm back at Excel. Now they are asking you to put in the rows. We did that. We are comfortable. I just see there's somebody in the... Um, please adjust the volume. It's a bit soft. Okay, maybe you should just do that on your side, sir. Um, your volume must be adjusted on your side. Okay. Just, I will just check that everything is good on my side, but just try to also then just up your volume as well. I'm going to up my volume. Okay. okay, let's try now. Okay, so the third question on the question paper asks you 
to this insert your examination number left and question 6i right the line in capital letters as a footer. Can you see there comes the capital letters? Okay, there is no way in, in your Excel to change that. So you need to make sure you put in on your caps lock. So let's go quickly. Um, so they ask you to put in a header footer. So where do I find that? It's the same as for Word. You go to insert. And then unfortunately, there's not a header and a footer that's split. So you need to choose. Yes, will you? I, um, in front of me in my screen, I only see Word. I do not see the, the Excel, the screen with the Excel. Okay, so there's a delay. Mm. Okay, let me quickly, can you still not see it? Let me go quickly. Where am I now? Is that better? I'll be in. Uh, I still can't see from my side. I'm not sure about others. Okay, let me just make a new share quickly. Um. Still not seeing it. Okay, let me quickly just reshare it again. Um, <clears throat> okay, you're seeing word now, ne? am I correct? Okay, for you, can you just up quickly see, can you see the Excel now? Um, I don't see my screen. I think, uh, yes, I can see Excel now. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm not going to switch between Word and Excel. So I would please ask you to then follow the question paper with me because that makes the computer confused if I share multiple screens. Now I'm going to see if I can just get that option maybe to just see that I want to do that. Um, yes. Okay, advanced. I just see if I can change the advanced sharing options. Um, okay, it doesn't give me that option. Okay, nevertheless, let's carry on. Okay, so you, I assume most of you have that in front of you. I will try to make it uh, as uh, clear as possible in what I'm doing. So they are asking you to insert uh, exam number. So I was busy explaining to you. You go to insert. You go to header and footer. Okay, now remember, there is no header and footer um, to go to like in Word. So you literally have to say, go to the footer. Okay, I'm glad my screen is doing what it's doing because it can happen to you as well. Don't freak out. Just tell your computer that you are on this page. Okay, I told the Enforce last night, the computer is like a man. Ne? Nigel, you need to tell a man what you need to do. Otherwise, they're not going to know. It's just a joke. You will get to know me. I'm not taking life too seriously. Okay. So, in the footer, you need to um, put in your examination number left. So, that is your left. So, you're going to put in your exam number. Please note, this is going to be a number. Normally, you don't have an exam number. You've got your ID. Okay, so you're going to put in 80, what, what, what there. And then they also ask you for your question 6A to be right aligned. Okay, which is there. Now they are asking you to do it in the capital letters. Now, can you see I did this by on purpose because there's no way I can change this. I need to delete it now, put in and say, okay, obviously when it's a number, it's not going to be... That's not my real ID, but I'm just putting stuff in there. And this must be looking like this. Okay. Please make sure if they don't put a space in between six and I don't put one, you're going to lose a mark. Okay. Um, so that was number two. Number three was asking you, okay, obviously remember now, okay, now this is where the students also feels like they have lost the plot. Now you think, well, Hona, how do I go out of this now? Because this isn't like it to work like this. You have to go to view 
and just say normal again. Okay? Your footer will not display here. Don't stress. When you go to file and you print, can you see your footer is displaying there? So you won't see it as you will see it on your Word. Okay? But if you want to make sure it is there, then go to your file print. Don't print yet. Just see that you can see it. Okay, so that is under view, you go to normal. Now they're asking you at number um, four to adjust the column widths to fit the spreadsheet in one page. Now you would see if you start typing it in, it would have looked like this. Okay, please use the question paper as an indication. You can see that the A goes over two lines. It's not merged. Okay. So you must double click that. That is what they want you to do if they are asking you to fit it into one page. Can you see there's a little line there that looks like it is almost perforated? That shows you, and there it goes again, that is one A4 page of Excel. So whatever is typed in on the right of that line or below this line will not be printed on the same page. So make sure that everything is nicely displayed, but make sure it is inside the correct um, page. And when you press in on the normal, then it will, will give you that perforated line. So it's a nice thing to work with. It's almost like the paragraph marker in your word. Okay, I'm going then to, so that's four. Question four says, do not use the fit to one page. So what that basically just means is they want you to manually go and see that you fit everything into one page. And then very important, at number six, they are asking you to print the spreadsheet in a portrait orientation without row and column headings. That means if that is not ticked, I'm going to show you exactly how, then that one, two, three, four, five, six is going to show on your print as well as that, let me just quickly show you. It doesn't display now, okay? So that is how they want it to look. So you must make sure that you are going to your view and you must make sure that your headings is ticked off. You don't want to print those, okay? So that is where you go. So view is where you find your normal and the headings must be taken off and then it will not print it, okay? They will custom, believe me, the examiner will customize your digital folder that you're working with, and they will make sure that thing is on, okay? So make sure it is off. Okay, then we are going to the, uh, the next question. The next question is just to say that you need to print it at a layout. Let's say they've asked for a... Uh, a landscape. Remember the difference between landscape and portrait. You can see that very clearly. Okay. If I ask for a landscape, that is where you choose the correct one. And let's say now they did ask for a landscape. They're not asking for a landscape. Make sure you see landscape before you press print. Okay. But they didn't ask for that. They asked for the portrait. Okay. And again, the examiner is going to put it on a landscape. Okay, they are very sneaky, sneaky. Okay, sorry, I, I see now here, I'm on the page layout. When you need to print that, and they say view this, this is where you click it. Okay, uh, 2017 offers have changed, this is still 2013, so you will go into page layout, apologies for that, and you will say, let's say they say print it with headings and rows. So you want that one, two, three, four, et cetera, to be printed. Then you click that, whoops, and whoops. And then you will go to file print, and you will see. Can you see that is how it's supposed to look? Okay. Somebody has left that. I hope I'm not boring you. Okay. And then the page layout. Again, if you don't want to print those, you have to take those off, and then it will then show you that it's not printed. Okay, so that is just to show you. They like asking you that. I am going over to the next page now, question 6B. 
Okay, can I just get the indication? Are you still all with me? Okay, it looks like you all, all of you are muted. So I assume that okay. you are with me. Okay, wonderful. Now remember, um, let's say that um, you, okay, you obviously built now your question 6A. You've saved it. Now you have to go and retrieve your, wherever you saved it. I saved it there as 6A, or okay, it's 6B now. So I'm already opening it up. So there it is. So I want now for you to look at question 6B and they ask you to change the question 6A in the footer to question 6B. So again, I'm going to insert, I'm going to header and footer. I, I go to design if, that, if, if it's still in the header and I say go to footer and then I have to change that. They always ask you that to B. Okay, so because I'm in my next question now, remember it needs to be a capital letter, so it needs to be caps lock. How do I get out of this again? I go to view and I go to normal. Okay, for some odd reason, there mine is on normal again. Okay, perfect. Let's go to the second, the third question. It says, insert the header smartphones in capital letters. So now you also want a header. So you will go back to insert, you will choose the header, you're in headers now, make sure you're on the correct page. <clears throat> and they said they want it, um, it to be centered, so you're going to do it in the middle column, and they want it to say smartphones, and it must again be in capital letters, you cannot change capital letters, so you need to use caps lock. It also must be in bold, okay, so, similar as with Word and it must be um, centered, okay, which it is. So we're fine with that. Again, remember you have to go to view, to normal. You will not see your, um, you will not see your, your header there, don't stress, it will be printed out. So you will go to print to see if, it, it, if it's displayed correctly. Okay, number four says, Make all the changes as indicated on the spreadsheet and according to the instructions below. Now you will remember now, I'm gonna quickly try to see if I can, um, can you see my word or not? Will you? Yes, you can see me. But I've opened up a Word document now. Can you see that? Yes, I can see a Word document. Okay, wonderful. I quickly want to tell you this. I've taught my enforce yesterday. You have to understand that they give you two different question papers in one. What am I trying to say? This is what you need to do, but you also need to take into account the screenshot they give you. It's the same with Word. Please take a highlighter or a pencil and mark the stuff you are doing. For instance, these. These instructions are not going to necessarily appear on here. Can you see there's no footer on the screenshot? But it was an instruction that was given to you there. So it's basically, you have to read through this whole thing. This spreadsheet is still part of 6B, but it's almost like they are asking you two questions on the same spreadsheet. I don't know if I'm making sense now. But please mark whatever you have done so that when you come to the spreadsheet, you know, although there is no header, although there is no footer, the instructions was asked of you here. So you need to tick it, okay? Or highlight it and tell yourself you've already done that. They're asking you to insert the rows as indicated and then you must insert the formulas. Okay, again, copy. Those stuff is not on here. Okay, so I have opened up my document now in Excel for you. I'm going to show you what they are telling you here. So I hope that you have that open. Otherwise, you're probably not going to know what I'm doing here. They are asking you here on the question paper to merge and center at a 16 point. Now, darlings, if your question paper goes up until C, you must know that that is where they want to merge your cells. If, if the text was up until E, you would have merged that thing over up until E. But now 
your columns stop there, okay? So the easiest way just to do this is to go to home and you say merge and center and Bob's your uncle. So what does that mean? Merge means, can you see my row in, in row one? My column in row in A1 is now merge. It's one big cell. Okay. So they have basically taken all of those columns together and put it into one. So you just go to home, you click merge and center. If they ask for merge and left, you will then merge it and then just choose your alignment to be different. Okay. Are you with me? Okay. I'm carrying on if you don't stop me. There was an open row already done there. In, it says open row. So you had to put in the open row there. You had to leave a space. The next question they ask there, it's to make that a bold, a double, and an underline. Sorry, a double underline. So you have to go to home again. It's just like the funding word. You make it bold. And there you will find the double underline option. Okay. Then that income must be underlined, but just a single one. So you're just going to choose that and cho choose the single one. Then they want both March and April to be centered and bold. So you're going to choose the center. Remember, you have this lovely function in Word where if you hover, if you stay a little bit longer than you should on, then it shows you whatever is on that tab. Okay, so if you're unsure which is which, just hover a little bit and change it. And then it also must be bold. Okay, then um, the next one they want is for the total income. That is A. Now, I'm just quickly going to take you back to Word. Will you, can you see Word? Yes, you can see. Okay, this is what I want to explain to you. Can you see? Nobody explains this to you, so I'm, I hope I'm learning you something now. Can you see it says A there? That is what you need to do. That is the function, the formula that you need to create where A is. Okay, so I'm taking that into account and I'm saying, okay, I've got my question paper. My question paper at A is telling me to work out the sum of that income. So basically, they want both of those columns. If you look at Word, you will see, can you see it goes over both? Okay, I'm trying to um, teach you how to read the question paper. So if you are busy now with that, you need to know that I'm going to use, remember, we always start with the equal sign. Now, this is totally up to you. You can use your formula bar, which is in there. I like working in my cell because sometimes you're there and then you're actually working there. Okay, so I don't oh. want that. I want to work in my cell. You have to start with the equal sign. It is a sum. So you can either decide to go and look for it. I obviously know my Excel um, formulas off by heart because when I studied this, we didn't have this. We had to know exactly how to type it. But you have it easy, so they give you that. Don't try to bother now with that. Just go and think for yourself mathematically. You want to add all of that up. You don't have to put a bracket. You can just say enter. It will automatically put in the bracket. Now, remember, you can copy formulas from left to right and also from up to down. You just need to make sure your cursor on there. It must make that cross, not this cross, the small back crop, black cross. And you have to copy it over to that. Okay? Make sure when you put your cursor on there and you mark your C that it says it, it's taking C6, which is there, okay, up until C10, which is the correct one there. Okay, so you are comfortable with that. Next one they are asking us for the expenditure to be also uppercase. Now, it says UC. 
There is no way that you can type in expenditure and change that to an uppercase. You unfortunately have to delete that thing, press caps lock and put in X. Um, sorry, expenditure. Okay, are you with me? Sorry. So it is, it's an uppercase. Darling, who've just joined us, can you just maybe switch off your audio, please? That would be helpful. Thank you. Then you would also go to home, make it bold, and you will make it center. Okay? That is what they are asking of you here. You will see there is still some um, editing that you need to do. Okay, now you go back again. You know you've done that, so you tick it on your question paper. You make a little tick. B is asking you for the total expenditure. So you need to go and see where, where is B. B is in the 22 of B and C column. So you will go back to that and you will go and say, okay, I want, now for some odd reason, mine is in 20, um, 22, but I think I've got an extra um, open row that I don't have. Okay. Um, but I want the total expenditure to be here, okay? Um, I think there's actually a mistake here because it must go. Let me just quickly see. Okay, I see my mistake. This must all go one up. Okay, so cut it and paste it. Hopefully it's working. Yep. Okay, so that must be open there. There shouldn't be anything there because just switch off your audio please if it's not off thank you okay then i will take the sum of all of that and i press enter can you see it's going to be the same as we did at the top and i'm also going to copy that okay make sure again that it didn't take b it must take c because we're in c okay darlings it's very important that you make sure that all this has all this is answered now Okay, so the next one is at C. Now let's go and see. C says uh, we must take the profit of the total income minus the total expenditure. So don't make it more difficult for yourself than it is. Use, use those um, words. They are giving you that words so that you know exactly what to do. So wherever C is standing on your question paper, do that. So go to Excel, they say C must be at the profit, okay? And they say you must take your total income and you must subtract your total expenditure. You can press enter and then you can also copy that over because remember they are working in columns. So he's literally just going to take that and that again. And you see it took the C11 as well as the C20. So I'm fine with that. Now, if some of you have fallen asleep, please listen carefully, okay? By your luck, I'm also a maths teacher, so I'm quickly going to give you a maths education lesson very quickly because, unfortunately, you need to understand this calculation. Otherwise, you are not going to get it right, okay? A 15% VAT that are paid any amount of, of let's say you want 20% sale, Okay, that percentage signature basically means if I have to write it out in a mathematical formula, I'm going to say 15 and to take away. Yes, Cindy. Ma'am, uh, now your face, your screen is going on and off and that it's not on his side. Okay, I'm just going to share it again. Is, the, is some of the others also experiencing the same problem? Yes, ma'am, I did experience the same problem, but I restart my computer, then I log in again. Okay, I'm just going to quickly stop sharing, and then I'm going to share again. Um, okay, let's see. Is it better now? Is it better? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My okay, darlings. So I'm back at the percentage. Nigel, is it you speaking, my darling? Yes, I can't see nothing. It's just a, a black screen. 
Okay, but could you see me before? Yes. Okay, so let me just stop for five seconds. I'm going to stop and then I'm just quickly going to explain the VAT calculation and share it again. Okay, the VAT calculation okay. works like this. Whenever you need to calculate the percentage in maths, you are going to take the 15 or the 20 percent. You can't wipe the percentage of the board. Okay, you need to get rid of it mathematically. And in the way that you're going to do that is you're going to divide that with a hundred. Now, luckily. Sorry, ma'am. I cannot see your screen now. Now, you won't be. I, I only saw. Wake up. Hello. Can you see me? No, ma'am. I cannot see anything on the screen now. Okay. Let's just quickly see. Can you see me now? Nothing, ma'am. <laughs> Okay. I can't. Okay, who else can't see me? Me, I just see Nandipa's name in front of me. <laughs> okay, let's just give it a, a um, remember now. Um, it can also be because um, uh, of your internet connection. So let me just quickly see if I... If, if, I the same problem, yeah. Okay, how is it now? Oh, there we, I can see perfectly. Yeah. Now I can I be can able see to now. see the screen of the Excel. Now it's back. Okay, wonderful. Then I'm not going to now look for trouble anymore. Okay, so the 15% is um, to say, are you with me now? But luckily Excel, and this is what's so wonderful of Excel, he does make that calculation for you. Okay, so if I'm going to, I'm not going to go back to Word now because I think that makes the difference. If you go to your, sorry. Oh, I thought somebody's asking a question. Okay. So the profit at C must be calculated at a 15, um, sorry, not the profit. The VAT must be calculated. Now look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to say equal 15 and I'm going to put in the percentage sign. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply with that amount and i'm going to press enter okay darlings now you need to understand and this is where the mathematical part comes in when i take a percentage of an amount let's say for instance now the vat listen to my words i'm using i'm saying it is 15 percent of my total profit 15 percent of that one uh, 15,500. now listen 15%, we get rid of the percentage by dividing it by 100. Now, by typing in the percentage, Excel already does that for you. So you must just realize that when you are busy with a percent, they like asking this 15% or they sometimes ask 20%. Then you take, not of that, of a special. Then you must remember that in maths, if I say 15% of an amount, that of becomes a multiplication it's always like that so you need to say 15 percent multiplied so say it for you in words it says 15 percent of my profit i must pay the tax man the off becomes a multiplication so that is why my equation or my formula for that one is going to look like that do you understand what I'm trying to say, students? If you don't, then say stop, explain again. If you don't say anything, I assume you are with me. Okay, what Can am you explain, I... Uh, explain again, please. Okay, Nigel, they are asking for a percentage of an amount. This is 15% VAT that you need to pay on your profit. Are you with me? In yes. maths, when they are speaking about the percentage of an amount, okay? You're literally going to type that out. You're going to say, I'm going to try typing it out here. It's, it's going to be 15% of the profit, okay? That is what it says on your, on your um, question paper as well, if you can just have a look at that. Can you see that at D? That off in maths, always becomes a multiplication okay are you with me so when you do percentages calculation in excel 
you need to obviously start off with the equal sign and then you put in the, the number, which is 15, and you type in the percentage. It's on your keyboard. You must just find it. Okay, normally it's at the top one above five. So you have to put in shift. Why am I using that funny star? Because that funny star, which is called the asterisk, is the multiplication sign in Excel. Okay, are you with me? Nigel? Yes, ma'am. Is it a better understanding? Yes, I do understand now. Okay, so can you see what I've done now? I've copied the formula to the other one. Okay. Yes, so every time there's a little arrow, you know you have to copy, but I will, I will get to that now. Let's get to E. E says your net profit is your profit minus your VAT. Okay, so don't make it more difficult. Literally go and type in what they are asking of you in words. They are saying equal. That E that you're calculating there next to net profit is your profit. So you click profit minus. So you say minus and you say the VAT and you click there and you press enter and Bob's your uncle. Don't make it more difficult. They are giving you. Yes, Cindy. Um, sorry, so in percentages, when you when they're asking you for absolute cell referencing and you have to work out the percentage, but also use the um, the referencing, cell referencing, how do you do that? Right. We're going to get that to the next question. Okay, the, it's okay. in the question okay. paper. Okay. okay cool. Sorry, okay. sorry, but I'm going to get there now. Okay, Ms. Kat, it's a good question. Okay, Thank so you. are you comfortable with that? Can I carry on? Now I'm gonna now be naughty and see if I can do this because I wanna show you something. I hope I'm not losing you again now. Oh, goodness. Okay. Can you see there after we have done all of this? So you literally type, you see, remember I said profit? I literally say equal, I click on the profit, I type in the minus and I say that back. Okay, so you lose a lot of marks in the exams, but it's actually not difficult. But I think sometimes people don't, the lecturers don't explain to you what you need to do, okay? Um, then they are telling you to copy the formula to the other cell as indicated. Now, how do they indicate copying? Copying is being done by this arrow, okay? But I've already done that. So you could have... Just um, calculated the one side, but just remember to go back and do number seven. Okay, darlings, are you with me? Okay, number eight are asking you to display all the, the amounts as integers. Now, integers is a mathematical term for normal numbers. So there shouldn't be any text there shouldn't be, your computer should not see this as, a, as something else than a number, okay? So it is on general, which is fine. Are you with me? Okay, I assume if I don't hear now, then you are with me. Now this one is very important. It says, Insert horizontal lines using the methods with which you are familiar. They always ask that, with which you are familiar. Okay. They are asking for horizontal lines. Okay. Which means only the ones that go like this, whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. Must have lines. Now, there's two ways in doing this. I will show you both. I prefer this one. I mark all of my things that need borders, okay? Because that's actually what it is, it's borders, okay? Then you go to that little window. Can you see that? It's under the home ribbon. You choose that, and then you just make sure that you choose the bottom and the top, okay? But now you will see it only goes there and there, which is not what you want, okay? So let me show you again. You actually want all the borders, but you don't want the ones that go in between, okay? So I will go into more borders. 
And I will literally say, okay, I want all of that to be there. Okay, but I don't want the, so I basically want the inside. So I click there, but I don't want the vertical. Can you see, I literally go there and click it manually. And when I say, okay, can you see only my vertical lines appear? Let me just show you the print screen. Can you see that is what they want? They say only the horizontal um, lines must go. Are you with me, darlings? Okay. The other method that you can use, I don't know which one they've showed you, is to draw a border. Now, I'm not very fond of this, but I'm going to show you this. Sometimes they want the border to go, let's say, for instance, can you see my pe it became a pencil? So they want only that one to have one. Then it's like, then it's nice. But sometimes when you don't, you're not used to the pencil, then it's difficult because now the students struggle because you have to click on it and drag it off. Now, can you see I made a mistake there? I've drawn it too far. It must also only go there. Then I can go to home again. I can go down and I can say rise and then I just click on that little border. Then it takes away the borders again. Okay, I'm just showing you both. I prefer the one that I've just shown you now. I click, I say more borders, and I go and um, manipulate it there. Okay, as well, whatever I want to do it. Okay, I hope you can find one of those. Okay, let me just quickly show you. If you're inside, let's say you did decide now to use that little pencil. Don't stress if you can't go out of it. If you say you want to draw your border and it it's keep, it keeps on telling you that it's in a pencil, just press escape, okay? Okay, now the next question says, adjust the column width to fit in the spreadsheet on one page. Okay, again, you must make sure everything is displayed. Make sure that this doesn't happen, darlings. Wait, let me just quickly show you this. Sometimes you do this. Okay, that's not working there. Can you see? Don't, you're going to lose marks because that march, make sure you double click. That double click will give it the, I almost say the, the exact same, the minimum that that column needs to display correctly. So you go in between your lines of your columns and you double click. Okay, and Bob's your uncle. So that is how you do number seven. Um, oh, sorry, number 10. Now they are asking you to print the spreadsheet without row and column headings in a portrait. So again, you make sure that your page layout is in portrait. And remember, we go to um, page layout and we say we don't want the grid lines and the, and the headings. Okay, um, I hope you understand the difference between the two now. Okay. So the one that's on your exam paper, your question paper, that is the one that is printed with, with headings and row headings and column headings. Okay, is there any questions with regards to this question before I move on to question C? Yes, ma'am, can you hear me? I can, is it Nigel? Yes, there's another part I think it's in the beginning there. I would have to drag down to, uh, to get to the total of my income. I want you to explain that side, please, again. Okay. Just remember, all of this is also going to be on the recording. I don't mind explaining it again. I'm quickly going to explain it again. But if, if some of you are still struggling with it, just go and watch the recording. The recording... Okay, then it's fine. No, no, that's fine. I will quickly explain. So basically, they are asking you to add all of this up. That, must, that makes sense because you want to know if you sell all of these phones, what is your income going to be? So you're going to type in equal the sum. Okay, then you sum press the one that's there, double click on it, and you mark all of that. You press enter and Bob's your uncle. Okay, are you, are you with me, Nigel? Thank you, thank you, yes. Okay, now they are asking you to file save as the 6b i've already saved it you know how to save please save it correctly because now in question 6c they are asking you to retrieve this one okay 
a hard copy that's being printed out is not going to help. So you must go and retrieve this. Okay, I'm retrieving it. Here it is. Change the question 6B in the footer. So again, this is nice revision. You go to insert, you go to header and footer. I'm in my footer. I'm not going to get a train smash. I'm just going to say into the design. I want to go to the footer. They say you just need to change that to um, question C. Just make sure it's in capital letters. But so your caps lock needs to be on. I'm struggling because I'm in this view. I don't want to be in this view. I can't see my document. Don't stress. You will go to view and you will say normal and you will find um, all of your things. Okay. Then they are asking you the following. They are asking you to display the formula. And then you must adjust the width. Now, I'm going to, now, again, one of the lecturers said, students are not good with shortcuts. I uh, will agree to disagree because I am going to teach you one that you will never forget. Okay? When, now look what I'm doing. This, not, this is what you see. Keep your eyes fixed on the screen. Can you see what happened? Can you see it's displaying all of my formulas now? Can you see that? Okay, I suppose that's an Irish no. Okay, so I do this by pressing control and slangy key. What is the slangy key, darlings? I'm quickly going to send you a photo on WhatsApp of how I am doing this. Okay, I am showing you quickly. This is the slangy key. The slangy key is at the top part of your um, keyboard, just underneath your escape. Okay, just quickly see. I've sent it on WhatsApp. Maybe some of you are on your phone, so you can't open up. Oh, it's about, it's horizontal slangy key. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. So sorry for those of you. I'm quickly going to show you what a slangy key is. It looks like this. Um, let me just quickly open up um, a shift, and there it is. There it is. Can you see it? I'm going to make it a bit bigger so that you can see. Look for that thing on your keyboard. Can you see it, darlings? Yes. Okay. You must press that together with the um together with the control so control and slangy key together that is the slangy key a snake sorry if i'm, I'm speaking afrikaans now but it's i just... was lost with this slangy key <laughs> sorry i said i said man i was lost with this slangy key i was, I was trying to look oh sorry <laughs> okay yes it is, it's like a worm Okay, can we call it the word? Okay, now okay. I can see. Okay, but it looks like that on your keyboard. Are you following, students? So that is your short, mm. but please go and practice it afterwards. I will show you the other old little old tiny method. Um, you go to formulas, and then you say, um, see, I, I can't even find it because I never use it, but it's under formulas and you need to, or is it now under page layout? You see, I can't even find it because it's always it's always at a different place. When you're in, in this one, then it's there, but it should be under formulas. You must, you must say show formulas. Do you see it? Because I don't see it. Okay, but I think that is, um, you saw, show formulas. Can you see? Show formulas. But can you see? I never use it because it is just how, why would you want to use this if you can use control and worm? Control and slangy key. Okay. Are you with me? Are you with me, students? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Please have a look. If I press control and worm, nay? If I press control and worm, can you see? All of those data are on the right side of my perforated line. It's not a good thing because why? If I go and say print now, guess what? This is going to be over two pages, which I don't want. I want it on one page. So Nigel, you need to make sure that you adjust this very manually. So you can just double click on that. Can you see? That is inside again on one page. 
It's literally just fitting very nicely into this page. Are you with me, darlings? It says there, you will be penalized if your printout is not legible. In other words, they don't want to see something like that. Okay. Darlings, I quickly just want to, to tell you something. Sometimes your, um, your uh, thing gives you an error of an um, a N and an I, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I will send that error messages to you. The only thing you need to do when they do that, I just want to see if it won't give, why is it not giving me that one? Okay, I'm going to okay. see if I can, but so, you know what I'm talking about? It gives you a funny NA with it sound. It looks mm -hmm. like the thing is, is swearing at you. It means your, your column is not big enough for everything to be displayed. So don't stress it out. Your invigilator is not going to help you. They're going to say they can't help you. Then don't ask them. Do it for yourself. You double click and whoops, pops your uncle. Okay, I will, I will, I will just come back to that to, to, to show you an example. Now they are asking you at number five to print the spreadsheet with row and column headings. With row and column headings. So again, where do I find that? I go to page layout. I say I want to print the headings and the grid lines. This is the first time they are asking us this. Can you see the difference now? There is my column headings and there is my um, row headings. Okay, so I found it on the page layout. Are you comfortable? And then obviously they want your formulas to appear. Okay, so that was question six. Now we get to question seven. Again, they are asking you to create question seven. Okay, well, Kona, sorry, I think I clicked by accident on one of your to switch off your audio, but your audio is off. That was a mistake, sorry. Um, So, okay, let's quickly um, look at 7A. They are asking you to create the following um, question. I've already created it for you to save some time. So this is how it should look like when you're done. It says, insert your examination number as the header left aligned and your question right aligned again in capital letters. So now by now you should go and in your head, follow me when I do this. You know you should go to insert, you go to your header, you go to left, you say that's your examination number, you know your question seven must be in capital letters, you know you should put on caps lock because we're working in Excel, there's no way that we can do it otherwise and we're going to say seven A, make sure there's a space between the two. Okay, hello Winnie, Winnie just also uh, joined us. Okay, then darlings, they are also asking you to display the figures as indicated in the text. Okay, sure, but I'm now worried because wow, what's happening? I'm still in my header. I don't like this view. Am I going to stress? No, I'm not. I'm just going to go to view and I'm going to say that I want it to be normal. If you're still in your header, then view is not going to be an option. You need to be somewhere else in your um, Excel spreadsheet. Double click so that it appears like that. And then you'll be able to, um, to get it right, which I also can't seem to get right now for some odd reason. I shouldn't do this. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, so just must um, apply around until it gives you the option or control Z until you get what you want. Darlings, I just quickly want you to look at this. Can you see the word? If you can't see, then just raise your hands. Okay. So can you see that the coffee? Yes, will you? Can't you see? No, I can't see, ma'am. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Now, if you can see here, can you see that coffee products is underneath each other, but it's not, it's not merged. Can you see that, darlings? The same with quantity on hand. It's going over two and three, hey, not merged. I can't see this blank now, ma'am. Uh, maybe it's a cool. Okay, let's need. 
Let's just share again. Okay, can you see? I'm still on smartphone. Can you see me? No. Okay, let me stop again and then share again. Can you see me? No. Okay, let's try once more. No, I can't see nothing. Okay, maybe now. Can you see me? Yes, I can see uh, coffee. Um, am I supposed to look at coffee? Yes, coffee product type. <coughs> okay, darlings. Um, it's because I switched to Word, but I had to show you that. Can you see that thing? We call that wrapped text. Now, if I make it smaller, can you see it's not going to do what, 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 it, what I see on the question paper? Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to go and say home, wrap your text. Now, once you have done that and you make, but you have to make it smaller now ne? and a little bit bigger, then that will appear correctly as they want it. They want products, coffee products. They want it to look like that. Okay, so you must play around with the width and the height of your, of your shell. Are you with me, darlings? The same with this. Afterwards, you will see, if, I don't know if you have it in front of you, all of those also needs to be wrapped. You need to know when it, when it appears or, or being displayed like that on your question paper, they are not going to tell you to wrap it. You need to make sure that you are, can go and, and make sure that it is now. So you must make this a little bit smaller and the total um, and the percentage of total. Now, this is what I also want you to take note of. Totally standing alone, it's only one little word. But it shouldn't be at the bottom, it should be at the top. Can you see that? So then you just choose top aligned. Don't leave it there at the bottom. That is not what I want. They center aligned, mm -hmm. top and bottom. They actually want all of them to be top. They didn't ask you that, but you must look closely. Okay, darlings, can you see? Okay, then they also not gonna ask you to, um, they, they say that you need to display the fingers. There's no, there's no um, horizontal or vertical borders, okay? So don't put anything in there. They say you need to print it without row and, uh, and column heading. So again, you will go to page layout you will say you don't want that to be ticked and make sure when you go to print that it looks like that. Okay, are you with me? Um, sorry, ma'am, just a quick question. Yes. What if you need to what if you need to wrap the text over two columns? Okay. Over two columns. Okay, then you merge it. Okay, so for instance, that must be wrapped. But now it's a good question. However, the moment you merge it, do you understand it actually takes away the function of wrapping? Because wrapping is actually a function that you want to use for your column to be smaller so that all your, all your um, uh, text is fitting in. The moment you merge, you are making it bigger. So wrap and merge is actually working against one another. But if they do ask you that, which is very funny if they do, then that is what you do. But can you see then the wrap doesn't apply anymore? It kind of does. I mean, but, yeah, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I understand what you're trying to say, but sometimes you need to um, put quantity on hand yeah. in, in both cells cell two and three. So you need to wrap two and three together. Well, are you talking about these two? Yes. Oh, okay. So let's say you want B1 and B2 to be one. Is that what you say? Yes. Then you yes. do it exactly the same. You, you mark both, you go to home, you say merge, and then you just choose the correct one, either merge and center. Can you, is that what you're asking me, darling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's similar. You. you can merge, you can merge like this, 
like like a row and you can also merge um your your columns okay okay thank you okay just remember please the alignment remember the alignment of the to, to be the top and the bottom or whatever you are asking okay question seven and we're almost at uh, not really at the end but but we, we're getting close um question seven is a very very important question okay this is where where the purple normally it's the fan um with regards to i think up until year for the n5 it was a, a lot of revision of n4 work i hope i didn't bore you um but now from now on the the both of both of the n4 and n5 students must listen very closely okay so they are they ask you most now this was what you made and it was question 7a so you are going to retrieve this okay i've already have it open and i've already saved it as question 7b i just going to do what they are asking me they say change 7a to 7b so again i'm going to insert i'm going to header and footer and I'm changing that again then to be. Can you see they're asking you the same stuff over and over again, but you are getting um, marks for that? Okay, are you with me? Okay, so there your normal view is on again. Okay, now they're asking you to make all the changes as indicated on the spreadsheet and according to the instructions now i'm not going to go back to word again because it's going to it's going to now make trouble it makes trouble every time but i want you to to know that you will have a question 7b as a template in other words a screenshot i hope you understand what i'm trying to explain as well as the question paper with the questions Okay, so the first question there is they are asking you to make all the changes as indicated on the spreadsheet and according to the instructions. So please take your pen, pencil, highlighter, I don't care, but I want to see that ticks. I want you to mark at the one end and at the other end. I hope this is very clear now for you. It goes the same with word. But because I think I did explain it quite nicely. If you still don't understand what I'm trying to say, please raise your hands. Vu, you can you just give me an indication? Am I making sense of what I'm trying to explain? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hopefully the rest also feels the same. Okay. Sort types with corresponding figures alphabetically. Now, darlings. You first need to understand what are they asking you. They are asking you to obviously sort it from <clears throat> in alphabetical order. But can you understand that if I only select that, then, then this is going to be alphabetical, but the corresponding value that goes with that is not going to go with the sort. So when you are asked for a sort, you must make sure you are highlighting everything that needs to be sorted. Okay, I hope I'm clear on that. Then you go to home and you say sort. And this is just a normal A to Z sort. Remember, it can also be that they are asking you from small to big. Now, if you are going back, if I can just press control Z. Can you just choose one of them for your own? It's almost like a card trick I'm doing. Let's say choose one of the column, uh, one of the coffees, and make sure that you know the quantity and the selling price. Quickly choose one for yourself. I'm going to choose that one. Because I want you to see that it stays with that corresponding coffee. Okay, did your stays with it? Did your one stay with it? If it doesn't, you, want, you need to tell me because then it's wrong. But do you understand what I'm trying to explain? You need to mm -hmm. highlight all of that. Otherwise, look here what's going to happen. If I only mark this and I say home and I say sort, look there. It doesn't even want to give you that. It says you, uh, you need to expand the selection. Okay, so please do it from the beginning. Make sure you are selecting everything that needs to be sorted so that it can go correct hand in hand with that. I hope it makes sense what I'm explaining. Okay. Number two asks you there, 3.2, insert the horizontal and vertical lines using the method you are familiar with. Now, again, 
Choose yours. I'm just going to show you the one that I prefer. So I'm going to mark all of them. I'm going to go to home. I'm going to go to borders and more borders. And then I see on here that they want all of that, but they don't want the ends. And I actually see I made a mistake. I'm, they actually don't want those products to be in there. They just want these ones. So you must just make sure that you mark the correct ones. And then they only want um, the, the ones that are horizontal and vertical. They don't want those lines. So they don't want it to be closed up like that, okay? So that is how they want it to look like. You can just have a look on the question paper as well. But then you will see the bottom one didn't do it. So you just mark that one and you will say, okay, you're either going to use your drawer or you just want to say, okay, please, I just want at least my, my bottom border also to appear there, okay? And then, sorry, and then you will also see now they actually don't want these lines. So I will just go in again and mark that which they don't want. So this is where your pencil probably comes into play a little bit nicer, but I prefer this. It's, very, it's much more calculated. So that mustn't be there. That must be there. And I see that top one still needs a border. So I will just go and say I want a top border. Okay, so that is how it should look if, if you look at the template on page 16 that I've sent to you. Okay, you don't have the pages because of the PDF, but you will see it there. Okay, now they are asking me to insert the columns, the rows, and the and the spaces that's indicated in the in the question paper. Now you need to know your manuscript signs. When there's a little age. Okay, now next to those ones, you will see there's a little thing that looks like an age that went, or actually a, it's more an inverse Y. Okay, so it's a Y that literally is now being bot, uh, top to bottom. That is an insert line. It means that manuscript, that signature sign is telling you, you need to insert those stuff. You will see on your question paper, uh, the screenshot, there's an open row. Remember what I told you? Mark the row that needs to go on on top of that. Then there needs to be a row. Then they are also telling you that there needs to come in another text. So you need to put in another row, insert, right click, and there must be another row there. So there's going to be text and those rows are both going to be open. So you're going to type in there. You're going to say, remember, everything must be capital letters. So you need to make sure that your cap sock is on. You're going to say products, processed. And this is what they're asking you on the question paper and sold. Okay. And then it must be November. Um, 2018. Now they are asking you that this thing that you've just typed here must be merged and centered. Now again, remember what I've told you. You are working up until um, well, they are actually on, on wire. So you will see that your spreadsheet will go up until there. Then you will, oh, when I've copied that. Okay, so just mark the whole thing and go to home and say merge and center. Then it must also be bold. It must also be a 14 point. And yeah, that's about that, what they want. Okay, um, you can just maybe make it a bit smaller so that it appears as it is in the um, question paper. Okay, and then... They also, remember, this is now a new folder. In the previous one, that would have been wrapped. But they, they don't want it to be wrapped anymore, so you need to take wrap off. This is a new question. It's 7B. Can you see? So you need to make sure that it looks exactly as they are asking you. That must also now be 16. And it must be bold. And it must be italics. And it should not be wrapped anymore. So you're going to double click so that it appears um, as it should. Okay. <clears throat> but
but they also say they should only stand coffee products and not types. So you need to delete the types apparently as well. Okay. Now I am back at the formulas. It says there, okay, now you need to decide for yourself. Are you first going to go and put in all the rows and columns? I would actually advise you to do so. So you will see on your, um, on your uh, screenshot, there's a little delete sign next to Colombian. So you need to go and delete that whole row. So you will mark it and say delete. Remember that the, the delete a manuscript sign looks like a Q. So it will look something like um, this. Okay, that is a delete sign. Um, then they want um, be, uh, on this one, they also want to open row and then they want the grand total to stand here. Okay, so you're going to put on your caps lock, you're going to put in, see, sorry. Um, you're going to put in your grand total in capital letters. Okay, caps lock must be on. So that is also next to it, there was an insert manuscript sign. Then they're also asking you to put in a column right to this. So you're going to say right click and say insert. Can you see I've done that by mistake so that you can see just as you need to put your row in the correct order, you need to know that you need to put the column and then you say insert, it will always put in one before, okay? So you put the, there where you want your column, you must make sure that you put it in the one that's gonna follow in behind. I hope I make sense. That must be typed in. Then you're gonna also have another column here next to total that says VAT percentage. So you're going to, again, remember I said it was be before, so you're gonna right click and say insert. There needs to be two columns, so you're going to put in another one. And then you're going to say, okay, next to the total, it must say VAT. And it must say 15%. So that you're going to type in. And then you're going to put in the total amount. Okay. And then that was already done. Yes, will you? Hey, ma'am, can I be excused That's from class? I'll get, uh, I'll get the information from the recording. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Are, are the rest of you okay? Can we still carry on for a little while? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, yes, ma okay, wonderful. Because this is a very important one that I want you. Who was the one asking me of the, of the, um, the F4? The oh, it was me, ma'am. Okay, so you still, yeah, wonderful. Okay, so now they are also asking you to center this column. So you're just going to go to home and say center, okay? And then the other thing they are asking you is to also put in here by process. There must be an open row. So again, you're going to click there and make sure it goes on top. And then you're going to put in 36 and 41 and 54 and 44, and 33, and 36. Okay. Okay, that shouldn't be there. The Colombian one is now, they are actually making it very difficult for you because you already put the stuff in now. Um, they didn't give you the, the sorting. Yoh, they are very, very... I'm just thinking now, they are saying you need to sort the types with the figures corresponding, but they actually were very nasty. They gave you the screenshot without it being sorted. So all your stuff is going to be very dear Makar, because if you sort your stuff beforehand, if you understand what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. that's not very nice. Okay. Nevertheless, let's quickly see. Cafe Deluxe should be 33. And then um, your Gonic should have been 45. And your um, Nescafe Gold is going to be 41. And your Nespresso Capsules is going to be 36. And your Terbador is going to be 44. Okay, and that one does not exist because it was deleted. Okay, just make sure that you also create the correct ones. Okay, now we can start off with the ones that I actually want to get to, and that is the formulas. They are asking you to insert here 
this is I, this playing on your question paper. The total of the quantity on hand plus the process multiplied by the selling price. Okay? So you need to go now and say, okay, you want an equal sign. Literally just do as they are telling you to do in that column. They are asking you to put the quality in hand and you need to plus this. And then you need to multiply it with that. Okay? But now, I just quickly want to see, yeah, I think, um, I think uh, that uh, Excel does have Botmas built in. Can you remember now? Just remember that answer for me quickly. I can't actually. No, it doesn't have Botmas. Okay. So you need to make a bracket there. You need to tell the computer first, you need to calculate that before you can multiply it with that selling price. Are you with me, darlings? So you need to add those first. You need to put it in a bracket for those of you who can remember your bot mass. Bot mass means you first need to calculate the brackets and then. So you need to tell the computer that. Are you with me? Okay, I assume when I don't hear anything, you are with me. Let me just quickly show you again. So you're going to say brackets. You're going to add this. You're going to put that into a bracket. You're going to add that to that. Close the bracket. And then you're going to multiply it with that. Okay. And then you must copy it to everything down. Okay, now the next one says at B, this is column B, you need to take 15%. Sorry, yes. Sorry, yes. So, so if we get this wrong, if we don't put in the, the brackets, it's going to be totally wrong. No, you are going to lose the marks for that. You're also going to lose the marks for the total, but you're not going to lose the marks. They will carry over with your fault for this for these calculations if this um, carries over to the question. So say, for instance, you need this answer in this question, they won't penalize you, but you will lose okay. those two marks. Okay, no problem, thank you. So but try, to, try to remember that. Okay, so number C is referring to, sorry, I'm with B. Now this is a nice one to actually, um, to, to, to look at as for a vision of what we done. Now it says there 15% of the total and you need to use absolute cell reference. Now what I normally do is I just put in, um, they say 15% of the total. So I'll just use 15, I'll just type in a 15% there somewhere actually that's not on your, that's not going to be printed out. Okay, what I normally do is I put my 15% there. I'll show you now. You can put it wherever you they don't specify in, in this question paper. So you are going to do this now. Now, I hope you understand that when you use the absolute cell reference, you need to put whatever is going to be the absolute cell reference in a separate cell. I've decided to put it there. Now, let me just quickly explain absolute cell reference because I, I, I've seen with the years of teaching that they do struggle with that. Basically, what absolute cell reference is, is if you know you need to go and calculate 15% of that, of that, of that, of that, of that, you're not going to go and now multiply that 15% with each. You know all of those need to be multiplied by the same amount. Or let's say, for instance, all of that must be added with the same amount. Then that same amount or same percentage is going to be your cell reference. That is the one that you are going to reference, that you are basically going to copy to the rest. So you're going to start off with saying this equals 15%, which you've already typed in. And now, after the one that being referenced, you must press in F4. Okay? 
don't know why my F4 isn't working at this point in time. Okay, so you're going to say equal and you're going to put that in and then you're going to press, um, I'm pressing my F4 on my computer for some odd reason, it doesn't want to work. Okay, I'll just come back to that now. And then they are asking you, remember now it's 15% of the total. I just explained to you the off becomes a multiplication. Okay, Cindy, or you can't see me. Cindy? Can you just give me an indication? Cindy, can you can you see the screen? Because you've just shared with me that you can't. <clears throat> it was me that sent the message. Cindy sent it out. Well, okay. Sorry. No, sorry. He said she can't hear you, eh? Oh, she, can't, she can't hear you, but she can't see you, she can't do anything. Okay, so must I share it again? Please, ma'am. Okay, I'm just stopping it. Okay, and then <clears throat> let's just quickly share that again. We're almost done, eh? It's only this and then the chart. Okay, can you see me now? Cindy, can you just give me an indication in the chat that you can see me? No, I can see you. Oh, shine. Okay, let me just quickly try again. Okay, I'm going to stop. Um, Cindy? Um, Ma'am, ma I can see now. Okay, I can. you can see now. Okay, I share the Excel again, or is it better now? Yes, I can see, okay. but I missed that part that you just explained. Okay, it's fine. It's going to be on the recording, but I'm still busy with cell referencing. Okay, so, okay, no problem. Okay. Okay, darling. So I am busy now explaining to you. I hope you all understand the concept of, um, of uh, cell referencing with regards to multiplying all the same with a uh, amount. So I'm going to go and say equal. I want 15% and then I'm going to press F4. Can you see it becomes a little dollar sign there? It must do that because it means that cell is now referenced. It's almost like you capture it as a little value, okay? And then remember I said, if you said 15% of, then it means you're going to say multiplication of the total and you're gonna press enter and it's gonna give you an amount. Now, when you copy all of that down, then you will see each one of that has been multiplied with that 15%, okay? Now, if you don't want that to be printed on your screen, make sure you either put it outside of your layered um, of the one that, that you have there, the perforated line, or what I sometimes do is I go there and I make it white. Then it won't print, okay? Are you can with you just, me? Can you, just, can you just do that once again, please? Um, okay, so remember, you don't want this fifteen percent to to display. It's gonna look, it's gonna no, look fun. No, the, the the total cell referencing. Well, okay, yes. Let's let's quickly do that again, darlings. Before I start off with this, I just quickly. I'm actually glad this happened. What I would recommend you do is, although those um those uh, questions were asked of you to sort as well as the borders was asked of you. Can I give you a hint? Do not do the borders or the sorting until everything is done, okay? Even if it's asked of you, because you can see now, once I edit my whole borders are messed up as well as my sorting. So please, nobody ever tells this, but please do your sorting, but just remember to do it afterwards. Is that fine? Will you use that hint, please? And then um, don't stress about the perforated. You will know if you have a big screen like this, 
they would ask you at the end for it to be landscape. So some do that from the beginning because then you can see where it is. Okay, now I'm at cell referencing. You are going to say that let's just start over with explaining what is cell referencing. Cell referencing captures a cell, the value of that cell to be multiplied or added or whatever you tell the function to do with a couple of cells in a column, okay? So you want to work out 15% of each of those amounts. Now to save time and not go and say 15% multiplied by that as well as that, as well as that, I create the cell reference, your question will lead you on to knowing what you need to cell reference. It says there 15% of the total. So you need to know all of those totals need to be worked out at 15%. So your 15% is going to be your cell value that you reference. You're going to F4 that one. So you start your equation off with equal, you want 15%, but that needs to be cell reference. So you press F4 on your computer. Then once you have pressed F4, the dollar signs must appear there in the formula bar or there. It will also normally change into a blue color. Then once you have done that, you can carry on with your formula. It says 15% of your total. Remember I said of means multiplication. So you're going to go in and multiply the total. Okay? And you're going to press enter. Now once you have done that, you can copy that down and you will see that value, which is most now E8, um, is in your formula bar also being multiplied by the same amount, which was I1, which was 15%. Are you with me? Okay, I guess it's a yes. But you don't want that 15 to appear on there. So you're just going to make it white. This is just my own little trick I'm telling you. Okay. So there's another cell reference coming up. Let's just quickly carry on with C. C asks you to work out the total. You need to work out the total amount by saying total plus that. So they are actually telling you the headings of the column uh, value. So you're going to say equal, literally, just what is standing there word for word on your question paper. Total, and you're going to add the fat 15%, and you're going to press enter. So that is going to be your value, and you're going to copy it down. There's no cell referencing there. Okay, are you with me, darlings? Okay, now they are asking you to get a grand total or a grand total of all of that. That means you're going to take the sum of this column and you're going to press enter and you will see on your question paper screenshot there's a little arrow which go all the way until there, until D, which I haven't yet now calculated, but we'll get there now. It's zero now, but it will update it. Can you see you can also copy to, to the horizontal as well as, as you did with the vertical. You can also copy the sum to the vertical. Okay? Are you with me? Okay. So now there is E. E says you need to take the percentage of the total so this is the percentage of the total, what you're going to calculate, what are you going to do? That is equal the total amount of each type as a percentage of the total amount. Okay, now listen to what I am saying. This is always difficult for the people to understand. If I tell you that you have 30 
out of 50 for a test. Does it make sense to you that you are going to have, I'm just going to do it yes separately. I'm going to say you have 30 out of 50 for the test. Okay. That off, off not off, out of is actually a division sign. Okay. So I want the percentage. Now in maths, we multiply that with 100 to get the percentage, but we're not doing pure maths now, we're doing Excel. So you are just going to say we want it as a percentage, but then now sometimes they don't want it to appear as a percentage. Then you just have to take off the, um, the I assume they don't want the percentage more. But they don't ask that of you, but it is a percentage. Well, it says as a percentage. Okay, so it has to be percentage. But darlings, can you see that the 30 out of the 50, that 50, what was that 50? That 50 was the total marks of which the question paper counted out of. In other words, it was the grant total. Do you understand that? You need to understand that mathematical um, equation or calculation in order to understand how you're going to do this. When they are asking you for a percentage of the total, it's almost like asking you a percentage of your test. So your test mark was the amount of the test that you got divided by the grand total, which is that. Do you agree with me? But now all of these, all of these in, in column G needs to be divided by the same amount. So you are going to use your cell reference again. Okay, you are going to go, sorry, you are going to go F4. Sorry, I just want to type that over again. So it's going to be equal to that. And you're going to divide it with that amount. And you're going to press F4. Can you see it has cell reference it again? And you're going to press enter. And then you're going to cut it down or copy it down. But they want it as a percentage. That shouldn't be there. So we just take that out. You mark all of that column and you just change it to percentage. Can you see? Oh, I'm so glad this happens. Can you see that? That is what I was talking about earlier, that you can't see what's going on there. You double click. So don't stress if there's a hash. If there's a hash, it just means that it is not appearing. The, 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 the column is not big enough. Okay, darlings, I'm just going to leave this as is now until they are telling me how to edit my rants and as well as my percentages. Okay, is there any questions you have on regards with the formula before I move on to the last part? Okay, if there's no questions, I'm going to carry on. Remember, this is going to be sent as a recording for you. Zoom also has the ability for you to log in after our meeting again, and you can listen to it as a playback. I think it's a limited time of a month that you can still access this. Okay. Okay. Now at number four, they ask you to copy the formulas. We've done it again. Let's say I quickly just want to see if all my formulas is correct. What do I do? I press control and worm. Okay. I'm just revising with you. Now they are asking at number five to display the selling price, the total, the VAT percentage, and the total amount as currency with two decimals. In other words, all of those needs to be in currency except those two columns. So you're going to go to home. You're going to choose your option as currency. And you must make sure that it's two decimal. Let's say it was looking like this. 
Then you must take one off. Can you see it says decrease the decimal to two? Let's say they say no decimals, then you take it one, two, then there's no decimals. But for the sake of this question paper, it says two decimals. Okay? So it's two after the full stop. We don't work with decimals in Excel. Okay. Then they are saying to you, you need to display the process and the grant total except that the percentage of the total um, amount, so this total amount, this percentage, this last one, the rest must all be, the process and the grant total must all be integers. So you need to make all of this home and you must make it general. Okay, just must be a normal number. You can must say number rather than integral. Okay, then you must also um, change it, number seven, to a percentage, as a percentage with no decimal. So can you see they want this to be a percentage that we already done, but they don't want any decimal, so we have to take it off by uh, decreasing it. And so it needs to be displayed like that. The percentage must be there as well. Okay, and then the last one asks you to adjust the column width, make sure everything fit, fits in nicely. Before you print, go and make a print screen to see nothing is going over the second. Remember, you will have a second one now. Just throw that second page away, or you can just say, when you say print, just say um, print the current selection. Okay, if you don't want to waste, but you can just, if it maybe did happen because there was something typed in there, then you can just do that. And then they are asking you to fit it onto a landscape. I've already done landscape, but that is where you do it. And then you must also print it with row and column headings. So again, you're going to go to page layout and you're going to show print for both. Okay. I just quickly, just give me a second. I just quickly want to make sure with regards to the integrals, um, because um, I just want to quickly make sure if integers needs to be displayed as decimals or no decimals. Okay, so an integer is, the integers is no decimal. So you will then take off, the, in, yeah, the, the, the decimal. So please just take note of that. After we've selected that, we said numbers, but when they say integers, there should be no decimals. That is what it is. Because uh, when it's decimals, then it's obviously um, a rational number if we are going into maths now. Okay. So that was then to print with. We already said that. Okay. Now they say, please ask this as question 7B. Now I am almost done. If there is any N4 students on the portal at the moment, or are actually on the Zoom meeting, you, you are allowed to leave, but I will prefer you stay because graphs used to be part of your curriculum. Um, I did confirm it is not part of your curriculum anymore. If I'm under the wrong impression, you must please rectify but I am going to do a chart now. So it's not gonna be long, it's for six marks normally. So if you can maybe just bear with me a little more, I will appreciate that. Is that fine? Can we quickly do that? Okay, I guess that's a yes then. I'm just quickly going to save this so that we can retrieve it again, okay? Um, okay, so I've saved it now. I see because I already have a B. Okay, darlings, now charts. Charts, okay, before I actually go on to charts, just remember to sort your stuff now. I, I told you it's better to sort it afterwards, after you've edited your document, and then make sure you've put in by means of what is best for you, either with the pencil or with the borders. Please remember to put the borders in. Because remember, <clears throat> I told you that um, 
once you have edited now you're seeing then everything looks very dear makar very confusing so please go and it, you can just go and practice that borders please it's the only way you're going to get it right okay so let's look at the pie graph they are asking you to create a pie graph to display the products process of the coffee types okay so they want coffee types and they also looks like yeah must be a types for some odd reason it's not there okay they say they want this to be displayed as together with the pro a processed product so you're going to hold on to control and mark both of them simultaneously with using your control um button on your keyboard then you will go to insert and you will choose the one that they are ask you they will maybe ask you for a line graph a column graph a pie graph i will go through them now let's just quickly choose the one that they ask okay so they are asking for a normal pie graph so they don't ask for anything funny so i'm just going to choose the first available one okay now please listen very carefully it is very important i made some mistakes because i want to show you how to rectify because remember this is going to happen to you as well okay now they are asking you to insert the chart title darlings there is two ways of doing this you can double click on there and go in and then put in the chart or you can go open once you are clicking on that chart and you go to design you will get um the option of formatting your um your legends everything you need to to know is under your design button this is what you need to know there is your chart there is where you're going to put in your data labels if they ask you can you see this is where you're going to choose the legend sometimes they ask you to put a legend on the right or the, there shouldn't be any legend the legend is what is telling you of each okay so for instance the the nescafe gold is, is displaying as a yellow etc this is where you will find it so you will click on your chart and you will go to design and you will choose the element chart element okay let's first do this now please listen because i'm going to teach you something now your heading must be displayed there as you will see in caps lock so you're going to put in your id number i'm just putting in anything now please listen i know most of you work on your num slot so now you want to put in a new line and you press enter on your non slot and guess what it ain't moving nowhere you can't use that enter in your chart title it will not allow you to enter another line you must use the other enter button okay if you're on a computer please make yourself aware of the fact that there's two i know this happens because i know you are typing your exam number with the num slot and then you also want to use the enter in the num slot it does not work please use the one the big one okay the big enter that will then give you the next option to say products processed and then the last one says you must put in your question number i'm just going to say question 7c then you can go out there okay then they are asking you to display the quantities on the pie graph in other words they are asking you for the labels they're not saying um they are saying on it so some of them just say inside if they say outside then you can choose the 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 outside end okay they say for me it means on so i'm going to say on that is what a number 4 is and then they are asking you at number 5 to display the legend on the right hand side now this is the legend please note 
that there is one that shouldn't be there. Can you see why? Because there's a blank space. So when I selected my, my data, I selected a blank row. So please just hide that row. Can you see it now made it nicely? It took out that blank. I'm just going to quickly show you. Can you see that light blue one is blank, but it doesn't look nice and you're going to lose a mark. So if you add a blank one, just right click and say right, and then it is displayed correctly. They are asking you to display the legend on the right side. Now, darlings, please take note. If I'm anywhere else, there is not something like a design format toolbar for my chart. It will not be there. Just as your header design toolbar will not be there unless you click upon it. Then it appears there. Can you see? Okay, I just want this to go away. Then you say design. Sometimes you have to double click on the thing until this is not gray. And then you say labels, uh, sorry, legend. And they say they want it to be appeared on the right line. Okay, that is basically it. Let's quickly just look at a column graph. Okay, there is the options that you can display. Okay, I'm just going to choose one. Again, the legend for this is going to be different from the pie chart, but the designing options still stay the same. But now that comes along with a chart like this, you can also add the name of the horizontal axis, the X axis. You can try, you can change those names. Or you can say, okay, but I also want that actually to be, I don't want it to be called processed. I want it to be called something else. I want it to be called, let's say, so I double click in it and I say, I want the axis and the vertical one. Can you see it gives me that option? And I can just backspace and type in, let's say, types of coffees. Okay, please go play around with this um, and then you so everything you need to do is under the design button you're going to put your grid lines there maybe they're asking you to print it like this just go through that okay and and you will find everything that you need to to actually edit but the most important part i want you to know is how to put in the enter because that is going to give you a mark and then the last thing i want you to to understand with regards to graph is in the way in which we are printing it i don't want you to print it like this okay so you need to quickly right click and say move chart and then you can just say to a new sheet and you can say okay and you say file print and that is very nicely and neatly done okay so i'm quickly just going to show you again um Okay, it's already now in its chart, but let's say, can you see there's a chart and there's a sheet? I'm somehow going to um, do the, the chart again with you. So you mark them simultaneously on the same time. And you go to insert. They wanted a pie chart. We choose a pie chart. They wanted it to have the legend on the right. And we put in, remember, we've put in whatever you need to put in there. If you by accident delete it, then just press um, again. You want to put in a title there by add a title if you delete it completely and then put in the title. Remember to press the correct one. OK, and you can now obviously make it a bit bigger if you want to and move the thing. If you've done that and you don't want it to look like that, then just press Control Z. Sometimes I just quickly want to show you this. I ask you to print it in a style, like they would say, print it in style two. Then don't try to figure out, just go and hover and see, okay, that is style five, that is style six. It will also appear with the design toolbar. So I'm just quickly telling you, so let's say they said um, style seven, we will choose style seven, and then I will right click. I will then say move chart. I will say to a new sheet. I will say, okay. And now I can print it very nicely 
as a separate chart. Okay, so that is the end then of the Excel. Do you have any questions as of now for me? Um, or can I first then just stop the recording and, and then I will download it for you? With regards to um, to the uh, to the to any other questions, especially with with your N fives, N fives, you didn't see me um, for uh, work, and I just quickly, I'm just gonna take two more minutes of your time. I know we've been busy for a long time now, but I just quickly want to tell you this: I'm gonna have a theory class because I know. Mrs. Weber is going to help you again practically on Saturday. I'm also going to be there for a theory class. We must just try to schedule one. I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunately only available from 12 o'clock onwards. Please communicate with me either via the student app or then with the WhatsApp so that we can schedule a theory class for you. I really want to do theory with you as well. And then you can ask me any other question that you would like to ask me. Okay, I don't want to overlap with Mrs. Weber. Weber, however, we are there together with a, as a team to support you. So you can please communicate with me privately or on the WhatsApp or on the student app if you would like to have a theory class that I can give you. Okay or any other um, con um, concept or content of Word or Excel. I am also going to just quickly share with you my N4 Word because it's a good revision for you. You can use it. You don't have to use it. It's up to you. Okay, darlings, is there any questions before I let you go? No, ma'am. No, ma okay, I no. hope this was helpful. I hope that you... Okay, wonderful. Please ask me if there's any uncertainty about anything, and then I will um, you know, wish you a blessed Sunday further. Thank you for logging in. Thank you, ma'am. Enjoy your day. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.